This land that I'm stood on right now is Newcastle's Town Moor. It sits about a half a mile just north of St James's Park. It's about a thousand acres of land. That puts it bigger than Hyde Park in London and Central Park in New York. Now, for about a thousand years, the freemen of Newcastle have been allowed to let their cattle graze on this land right up until today and that was enshrined in law through an act of parliament of 1774 and then there was a further act uh, in 1988 called the Newcastle and Town Moor Act which further tightened up those regulations. So in this video I'm going to be asking a couple of important questions. First of all, is this whole area of land being fully utilised to the benefit and advantage of the population of Newcastle and by way of example could Newcastle United build a brand new state-of-the-art stadium just over there on the edge of the town moor or is there more going on than meets the eye and actually everything that could be done is being done here on the town moor it's coming up welcome back it's eddie here from tyneside life so yes here i am on newcastle's town moor now at the beginning of the interview i mentioned that the town moor is about a thousand acres bigger than hyde park in london and bigger than central park in new york well it isn't or anywhere near it the town moor that i'm stood on right now is about 350 acres that includes exhibition park just over there and behind Ex exhibition park the 30 or so acres that's used for the hoppins every year so the town moor is actually less than 300 acres. The thousand acres come from the other moors that come around the town moor, which include Nuns Moor North, Central and South, Hunters Moor, Castle Leasers, Dukes Moor, and one or two others. That makes up the thousand acres, so it's a bit misleading because they're separate moors and they're separated by the main arterial roads that run through Newcastle. And to understand a little bit more about all of that and the other things that are going on in order to attempt to answer those two questions I raised at the beginning, we need to understand a lot more about the history of the town more, a little bit about the Freeman, but also how the land has been utilised and managed today. Over hundreds of years, there has always been a relationship between the local government, corporation, magistrates and council and that of the Freeman of Newcastle. Periodically, this relationship has been fractious, hence the need for the 1774 Grayson Act. Thankfully, today there are positive relationships between the Freeman and the Council, and many of those historical traditions remain. If we look at the Town Moor land from a map dated 1869, we'll notice that there was no real structure to the land around that time, and this map is a park proposal map. You'll also notice that neither the Leasers Park nor St James's Park has even been thought of as a football field yet. Leeser's Terrace and St James's Terrace do exist, however, as they were built in the 1830s and 40s. Leeser's Park came into being four years after this map was produced, and prior to this there was a plan to have a cricket ground where Leeser's Park is now. The RVI was built in 1906 after the Freeman and the Corporation donated 10 acres of the land. Before that, between 1721 and 1881, there was a race course on the town moor roughly where the Hoppins is now, with a permanent grandstand. This all shows that under the right circumstances, land from the town moor can be donated if it can be seen to benefit the whole city. Although the land is technically owned by the council, because of the grazing rights of the Freeman of Newcastle for their cattle, in effect, the land is jointly owned by the Freeman and the council, and both need the consent of each other should any decisions be made on the land. Interestingly, for hundreds of years, the town moor has been the location of the town's gallows, although I'm still trying to find out the exact location. And this is where St James's Park has famously named one of its stands, the Gallagher End. And infamously, in 1650, 15 witches were hanged on the same day, and it is believed that those bodies were dumped into an unmarked grave in St Andrew's Church on Gallowgate. And just to clarify, St James's Park, the home of Newcastle United, has been built on land donated by the Freeman of Newcastle. And the Freeman of Newcastle have continued to donate land to the club as the stadium has expanded over recent decades. Fast forward to today, and the Freeman of Newcastle see themselves as the protectors of the town moor, as an unofficial green party that are tasked to ensure the open land is protected from further development and to ensure the local population can enjoy the open spaces. 
where a lot of local authorities are having to sell their green spaces to raise money, the Telmore is now sustainable by allowing hundreds of cows to graze from local farmers and revenue generated from such events as the annual hoppings, music festivals, a circus and other community events. Rent is also collected from St James's Park, Fenham Barracks, BBC and money generated through local charities all go to help the freemen maintain the moors. The town moor is also used for annual and weekly sporting events such as a weekly park run, a children's park run, the Great North Run, the Great 10k run and by local cycling and cricket clubs. There's always something going on. There is also a lot of environmental work going on with an ongoing operation to plant thousands of trees to help mitigate the increasing effects of climate change and to replace the many trees that were cut down during the Industrial Revolution. Along with the maintenance of hedgerows and plantations, this will be massively beneficial to birds and local wildlife. There's also work to protect native and wild species of flora, fauna and insect life, particularly on Nuns Moor North. There's also a community of bats that are being protected on the moor. The integrity of the moor is seen as being crucial for the city and for the benefit of everyone, despite its shrinking in size over recent centuries. All of this may help answer any questions regarding future development on the land, particularly a new stadium for Newcastle United and the required transport infrastructure. Although it doesn't appear to be completely out of the question, it does seem highly unlikely and would need further exploration with the Freeman. For example, if they saw a wider benefit in the long-term sustainability of the land. So you can probably see a lot of fantastic work going on by the Newcastle Freeman, the council, conservation, wildlife groups, plus other partners doing fantastic work. And you can probably see now that the cattle being allowed to graze here um, has protected the land but in my opinion it also hinders some opportunities for growth in the city particularly through tourism now you might not know between three and four thousand people are injured every year by cattle between 2018 and 2022 30 people were killed by cattle uh, it's quite serious i have personal experience through my long distance treks of being chased by cattle on three occasions and I can tell you it's quite a scary experience. For that reason, between April and October, you'll find me nowhere near the town moor. So you're not going to find the town moor on TripAdvisor's list of the best places to visit when coming to Newcastle, unlike you will do when uh, looking at London or New York with Hyde Park and Central Park. So I've got some questions I'd like to answer. I'm going to be doing a further video about the Freeman of Newcastle. I have some questions I want to put to them. You might have lots of questions as well that you want might answer, uh, to have answered. Please put them down in the comments below. And if you'd like, you'll receive a notification when that particular video is released. Don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to like this video as well. I hope you found it interesting and useful. I've certainly found it really fascinating putting this whole thing together. And anyway, until next time, I'll catch you later.